Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. My name is the editor, Martin Krima, joins me today to unpack the latest news in the mining industry. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Ashley. Can you tell us about African Rainbow Minerals' recent board approval for the construction of chrome recovery plant at Bokani Platinum Mine? Yes, you know, when you mine platinum group metals these days in an upper group two reef, you have the benefit of chrome, and chrome price is good. So at Bakoni, it's primarily a platinum group metals mine, but it's in upper group two, UG2 reef, so you've got this chrome opportunity. And they have done the sums and found that it'll be great to recover that chrome. It'll mean that their basket price, which is low for the platinum group metals, will be lifted by the chrome. The chrome price is good at the moment. China is the biggest buyer of this chrome converting it you know, uh, into ferrochrome and then stainless steel. Stainless steel is seen as being a decarbonizing steel, even though it's not directly decarbonizing. The fact that it lasts so much longer than the, the normal steel that is uh, produced by uh, carbon intensive uh, energy, and because it lasts much longer, you don't have to produce that steel so many times if you do the equivalents. So stainless steel is important, and, and the demand for this chrome is high, and they've discovered that it's worth doing this chrome re recovery project, and uh, they're doing the design of the plant now, and we'll go into construction, I think, next year. And a recent report by Merafe Resources shows ferrochrome production to be edging back up marginally. Yeah, so it's a marginal 2% rise in the ferrochrome production by Marafi, which you know is on listed on the Jonesburg Stock Exchange so we can always get a report as to what's going on. And that is good news because, you know, this is <laughs> the way you add value to chrome. We used to be the biggest producer of this by a long shot. And because the people running Eskim did it so badly, you know, we lost out on, on these sort of markets. Now the government um, would like us to do this sort of thing to add value, but how can you? you know, when their side of the bargain is not really contributed here. So we've seen a massive decline in our contribution in terms of ferrochrome, which is five times the value of chrome. So it's really worth going that route. In the end now, we are giving China most of the chrome, and they are eating our lunch, as it were, uh, getting the added value using our chrome, which Traditionally, I mean, we were so far ahead of the world, it's a great pity. And lastly, while local beneficiation is a good idea, it needs to make good business sense. Yes, you know, we're hearing government again say, you know, add value, beneficiate. But I think that you've got to understand what that requires. It, it requires a lot of government contribution. Now, we've just had a situation of, a, you know, titanium effort through Ilmenite in Richards Bay. And you see there that... In other countries, Europe, China, you know, when you go into an industrial development zone, the government has actually already put in a lot of effort there in terms of energy and all other infrastructure that you need. Whereas we're not doing it there, yet we're still going on this tough route of having to add value. So I think the government doesn't quite understand when it glibly just makes these remarks. It also, as we've seen, you know, we've lost big markets because of the government side of the business collapsing. So it has to make business sense. They can't just give this lip service now. You know, we've had enough of it. Uh, for decades, we've got this lip service, but not understanding that they're not contributing. They are causing the downfall. And if it doesn't make business sense, they've got to incentivize it, but they can't force it. And you, you see a little bit of a twisting of the arm, you know, add value. Of course, the whole of Africa is the same. They want to add value to their metals and minerals. They've also got problems. You know, they've also got energy problems. So it's easy to talk, but it's not easy to have a business case where you on the government side are doing the right thing. Thanks for speaking with us, Martin. A great pleasure, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Mining Weekly daily email newsletter.